The Falsehood of Herlock Holmes. Time for the Watson episode. The morning was another pretty one for pleasantries and breakfast. Dessert as well, of course. No sooner had Pendleton finished clearing the table did he return with scones specially prepared for me. The rumor is the daughter of Viscount Brooks is missing, but I have my suspicions. The most likely possibility as I see it is that she's run away. See it in the details. It isn't only Lady Isabella that's gone missing, but one of the servants, Alan Mayer, is nowhere to be found since. Other servants within the family are whispering links between the two, claiming they've been very friendly the past few months. But is that enough to claim the two eloped? Ah, oh, and if you would allow me to pour you some tea, my lady. I resumed with reading the paper as Pendleton served me his finest. Wonderful, Pendleton. What perfection! Modest as my sips were, each one invigorated me to my toes. I loved everything he prepared for me, but there was nothing better for my spirit than his tea. It could be they struggled with the difference in their social classes. You might understand this Alan's position. Have you ever experienced a similar love, Pendleton? Excuse me? Have you struggled with love for one above your class? I shared the exact page I was reading. Pendleton's reaction was, well, it was unexpected to me. One that was difficult to put into words. You aren't suggesting that I may harbor, well, thoughts for you as a woman. What? It was so oddly inquired that it took a moment to understand what made the question an uncomfortable one. Did he think I was asking if I was a candidate for his affections? That is not what I'm suggesting! I meant love in a general sense! Ah, oh, I see. A relief, that. The idea was so ludicrous that I couldn't fathom why you proposed it. Is it so far-fetched that it warrants ludicrous? He spoke more freely than any butler I knew. Ahem. To answer your question, I have experienced something similar once before, yes. This woman was indeed out of my reach, but I loved her with all my heart. Loved her, you say? A wariness struck me. Somewhere within, for the murkiness of it all was indistinct, was a glimpse of a Pendleton I had never met. Very rare were the times he stood so close whilst his mind roamed outside my reach. A change of subject is in order. You remember what day of the week it is, hmm? Yet it was, as noted, but a glimpse. His stateliness returned by a single breath and a broad smile. That is an abrupt change? And of course I do, it's Sunday. Correct. And, of course, what must be done on Sundays? Did I make arrangements? Nothing comes to mind. That face is all the answer I need. Oh, how very lamentable. You once busied your mind with sweets and dreams of a thinner waistline, but so obsessed you are now with affairs of homicidal nature so that you no longer have the mental capacity for one of life's most important rituals. Woe is me. If what I'm forgetting is so important, you might tell me instead of pretending to wail like a baby. Have it your way. This baby wails because you forget morning mass. Mass? Oh dear! How could I? Sunday church was a large part of my routine, and part of my routine it would remain. Had my life become so full of late that even faith was shelved to the back of my mind? That is important! How terrible of me! Your face tells me you're thinking, how terrible of me, and I agree. Will you go? A bit of prayer at the church ought to bring you focus. That it would. Much more than staying cooped up here for the day, certainly. We didn't have lessons on weekends, and so it became a weekly battle to rouse myself from bed before the temptation to do nothing possessed me. The weather today was exceptional, and it would have been a waste to spend the day indoors in favor of bedsheets in slumberland. We arrived at St. James's Church. Watson and Holmes were both in attendance. Good morning, Emily. Good day to you both. And to you. <laughs> it feels strange to run into you somewhere other than school. Does it? 
Suppose now you mention it, we've never met this early on a Sunday. What difference does it make? We didn't come to stand outside. In we go. Yeah, since barking orders is plenty more effective than a polite ask. Holmes, as he so often appeared, was in a tender mood that few would chance to remedy. This morning, I wondered if he were especially sensitive, for his eyes were squinted from beneath with puffiness, and over from his li lids not unlike the way one copes from an unbearable headache. Short on sleep as you are, no one else knows but me. Won't kill you to say please. Why? Do you feel well, Holmes? Like a real bench winner. Now can we please go and s Would you step to the side, budding doctor? Marple! How long have you been here? Hmm... From when you said good morning, Emily, or so. That was the very first thing I said! Marple next turned from Watson to me. A pleasant morning to you, Emily. And to you as well, Marple. She greeted with composure. Watson stood behind her wearing an expression that was desperate to speak whilst left speechless. I'm never quite sure if they get on well or not. But what chance that we all met here? I had no plans secured later, and seeing them presented a number of wonderful ideas. I could have marched back home, head held high knowing religious requirements had been done and that I remained a well-to-do believer, but where would the fun be in that? I had to make use of this occasion. Ah, you know, some tea afterwards sounds like a perfect idea. I'll come visit with delicious sweets next time. Thank you again! There's no time like the present. Watson, Holmes? Hmm? Would it be alright if I pop by your office later? Or we could walk together after the service is over? Of course it'd be alright. We'd be happy to have you. We would not, Watson. You can't decide on your own. I know! You should come with us, Marple. So I've turned invisible. I would love to, Emily, but I've regrettably something else to take care of today. That's a shame. I'll be sure to come when the time presents itself. You needn't look so glum. She stroked my hair to comfort me. I shall take that as a promise. Ah, uh, yes. Emily? Watson, for his part, was reluctant to bring something up. Perhaps I've been too forward. You see, our flat... our flat is... Have you your own matters to take care of? If the timing is inconvenient, I quite understand. Oh, no. Nothing at the moment. I'm more worried that the place is, um, not tidy. It's a real mess, if I'm honest. I hope that won't be a bother to you. It's not a bother. I'm sure you're making it worse than it is. Oh, I wish that was true. It was in the Baker Street office when I finally knew what Watson meant. Uh. Watson darted into one room, arms straining to carry a mass of books which had been previously scattered about this way and that. Straight after, he darted out again, this time collecting a mountain of clothes and other misplaced knickknacks along the way. It wasn't cleaning, it was shuffling from one incorrect place to another temporary, or very permanent, incorrect place. Mm. I... I... I should have come at another time. Was I pleased to have been invited? Absolutely. And once I arrived, did this change to a despondent hunch that I may be in the way? Most assuredly. As I stood and ready to excuse myself with a curtsy, Holmes entered with a tea set on a tray. I went to the trouble of making this for you, Miss Whiteley, so you had best drink it. Th thank you. I took a small sip. It's delicious! Of course it is. I brewed it. Oh, Holmes! Would you pour me a cup? I'm not going to the effort of pouring a cup that will soon find itself all over the floor. Make your own. Have a little pity for me! Just then, we were interrupted by a knock at the door. Yes, who is it? Were you expecting a visitor? No one. I can only assume they must be here to give us work. I do apologize for the mess. Please, right this way. Watson escorted the woman inside. I would, at first glance and in simple terms, describe her as a middle-aged woman on the cusp of being referred to as elderly. 
The poor woman is terribly off color. It's Madame Janet. When he observed her for himself, Holmes stiffened considerably and whispered her name in a low, unsettled tone. It was not one second later that he dived downwards to hide beside the table with a clumsy kathunk of movement. A clumsy maneuver on his part, strange in general by anyone's review, but made stranger from a man like Holmes. What's wrong, Ho- Do not speak my name. Holmes's glowering proved ineffective when paired with panic. That woman is the wife of Duke Alex Janet. He died of a heart attack last month. Excuse me. I've just remembered something that needs my immediate attention. The boy detective continued with his bizarre behavior. It was first a table, next a sprint to the wall, after this slithering that fooled no one, and finally a gallop through the doorframe for his final escape. Huh? Wait, hu Hush! Holmes was a man of stern glares, and the intensity of the one he sent to Watson was historical. Oh. By the way, what- uh, Holmes. What? It wouldn't do for me to be getting in the way while you have a client here. I shall take my leave and return home at once. See you in class tomorrow. What? What's going on? This is your home! He ignored Watson's cries to stop and raced through the back entrance without further discussion. Nothing more could be done. So I assume it was then that Watson like went after him like, what the dickens is going on, Holmes? And then we get the flashback scene later and then he comes, comes in now. Oh. I wonder just what is going through Watson's head now. Pardon me. You're Madam Janet, if I'm not mistaken. Is there, uh, anything we can... How may I help you? I have something I should like to discuss with Mr. Holmes directly. Directly? I've received many a credible word regarding his capabilities, but it was not till this moment that I could bring myself to arrange a meeting. I am to leave London tomorrow evening, and, naturally... My mansion will not be under my eye during my time away, meaning this is my last chance to request his help. If his work is as glowing as his reputation, then I am certain he can put my mind at rest. As it stands, I tremble at the notion of leaving my home unattended. How unfortunate that he's just left. Hmm. Upon her final desperate plea, Watson righted his shoulders and lifted his chin to assume an aura of confidence. Whatever he was to say, he wished for it to be a bold declaration. Pray, I would hear more details, Madam Janet. Mm hmm. I, Holmes, would be delighted to take on your case. What? What? And this declaration was too much of a shock. All I could do was stare, mouth hanging open. He's gone mad! What is he thinking? My! You're Mr. Holmes. Do forgive me for not realizing sooner. You have a sturdier figure than I was led to believe. I've become out of touch with the world since I stopped reading the paper after my husband's passing. Ah, uh, but that's neither here nor there. I'm so very pleased by your enthusiasm. The madam was moved. Very genuinely, she stood and grasped his hand with a shaken, earnest grip. W well, why don't we get comfortable here and you start from the beginning? It was only after he gently broke free of this that he indicated to a chair in the room. Pardon my asking, but who is this young lady? M me Um... I'm- Oh! I apologize for not introducing her earlier. She's- she's Miss Watson, my very capable assistant. I'm who? This is absurd, Watson! I thought my jaw would unhinge. Watson tried desperately to convey a message without saying a word. He wants me to go along with this? Oh, easier said than done. Oh! I've been told your assistant's name, but that she was a woman. 
that's quite a detail to have not heard from anyone. She made it no secret that she carried suspicions, and rightly so. Very well. I'll play his game, but he's getting a stern lecture from me as soon as we're alone. How strange they never mentioned it. But I am indeed Watson. I do not mean to question you, but all I've heard has suggested you appeared strong and burly. A trick in the wording, madam. By all appearances, I don't look the part, but I'm a fair bit stronger than you would expect of my size. Uh, here! If you still carry doubts, I'll show you by lifting up this cupboard. Eve! I roused as much strength as my tiny arms possessed and successfully lifted it from the ground. And this is when my attempt to act as an accomplice went awry. God! No! Uh, are you alright, Miss Watson? I did not possess the absolute best posture for lifting heavy objects, so to pick this heavy thing up caused a pain so severe that I nearly let it smack the ground. The only reason I didn't drop was due to Watson, who came to my aid. <laughs> this would be simple work for her, but she's in the midst of recovering from an injury. Nothing awful, mind. Only from a scuffle after apprehending a criminal. One would expect she'd take more care in light of that, but she can't resist the challenge. Come now, Watson. Spare a thought for all the worry it causes me. Yes, of course. I believe you, Miss Watson, so I beg that you take a proper rest. It wouldn't do for a young lady to suffer injury on my account. Y yes you're right Unable to disobey, I took my seat. Right. Now that we're settled in, would you mind telling us everything? Watson gave a final glimpse of concern before returning to our client. Our client. We listened in silence as Madame Janet told her story. She spoke in a slow, aged manner, choosing her words with care in between depthful pauses. I shall repeat everything in summary to ensure I understand correctly. Your troubles began when you lost your husband last month to a heart attack and inherited his fortune. Since then, strange happenings have occurred one after the other. Your butler was injured by a snake race at the mansion. One of your maids collapsed from illness. And you were pushed down a staircase during a trip to London the fortnight previously. All this has led you to believe you and your servants are being targeted by someone after your inheritance, correct? Yes. Please, I beg you. I must have your help. If I were the only victim, I might continue to remain ignorant. But I cannot bear to see those around me suffer. What will happen come tomorrow, when I'm away, when I've signed the formal inheritance proceedings at my husband's family home? I fear with all my heart for those under my employ. To speak so uncertainly would commonly lead to suspicion, but I could conclude. This woman was an honest soul. These episodes brought her an unease that haunted her. This, with no trace of doubt, was the reason she spoke in such an irregular rhythm. Would you permit me to ask if you have any immediate family other than your late husband? A son, whom we adopted ten years prior. His name is Ted. I've not seen much of him lately, however. He left home half a year ago. And why did he leave? He had a rather frightful quarrel with my husband over inheriting the family name before storming out. Is he aware of his father's death? Or are these strange things you've been telling us? He knows of his father's passing, but none of what's been happening since. I've yet to see him since the funeral. We had little chance to speak during the funeral as it was. Why, when I noticed an injury on his arm, he refused to speak of what caused it. She mustn't want to worry him any more than necessary. If it was a quarrel over matters of inheritance, then is it because your son has no desire to receive anything? The opposite. My husband expressed to him candidly, I won't allow you to inherit the family name as you are now. Can you think of any reason he would say that? 
I'm afraid I can't. She leant forwards, just subtly, ever so subtly this movement was, as if she wished to add something more. Then nothing came, for she decided against it. I think that's the most we can work with for the present. Would it be any trouble if the two of us visited your mansion for a more thorough investigation? Oh, it most certainly would not. That was, in fact, the main purpose of my visit. Thank you. We'll need a moment to prepare, so I hope you're comfortable waiting here for a moment. Perfect. Now to sort out this higgledy-piggledy name business. I scrambled after Watson as he stepped into the next room. This is a bigger case than I expected. To affect the moment, Watson exhaled with loud drama as the door clicked behind us. Watson! Just what are you up to? Oh, right. I hope you aren't too angry. You're... um... Not hurt, are you, Emily? I'm perfectly well, but was it really so necessary to lie? I wouldn't have if I hadn't heard out Holmes first. Madame Janet's mansion is well known for being full of animals. Were I to go to a place like that, I'd scarcely come back alo- No. Never mind that. Whatever the reason, I've another urgent task to look into. I need to investigate something in this letter. It is of the utmost importance you work this case. Holmes. And there you have it. Does he do quarreling with animals? He'll never admit it, but he's awful with them. I'm not sure what we should do after hearing her story, though. This is no small case. I'll have to look into it to some extent, of course. You wouldn't turn away a woman in her state, would you? This laughable happening did not inspire a jest on Watson's part. This curiosity, this mystery, the situation that was dire to the woman inspired him to become the real Holmes. I would have to make two with being annoyed at Holmes over Watson, then. I couldn't, so you won't be going alone. I'm your assistant, and that is what assistants do. I am sorry for calling you Miss Watson out of the blue the way I did. Really, I am. You aren't bothered, are you? I was startled, but not bothered. At this point, I would like to help Madame Janet as well. And you. Thank you, Emily. Emily? I think you'll find I prefer to be called Miss Watson. Isn't that right, Holmes? Uh, oh! Of course. Right. How could I give her my surname? Like it's nothing at all. Oh, It's not the same as being married to her, you idiot! Hmm? Is something the matter, Watson? N nothing Let's go back. The madam's been kept waiting long enough. Oh, Watson. We then set off for the mansion, which we discovered was situated along the outskirts of London. It took but our immediate arrival to see why it was known for its animals. The garden, vast and surrounded by a study fence, was home for breeds of all kinds to roam. Dogs, cats, ducks, pigs, and others were in view. What a sight! You must love animals, don't you? My late husband was particularly fond of them. He would bring in all manner of exotic creatures from abroad to raise them without a second thought. The mansion is treated as something of a zoo amongst the locals, as we have visitors who come from time to time to look at them. It became so known that a respected zoologist, Baron Lionel, once came to admire the grounds two years ago. Perhaps you know him. He's very active in the fields of hunting foxes and rare game before stuffing them, you see. But he appeared most impressed by our collection. I'd love to see some of the more exotic ones if I could. Hmm? What is it, what? Uh, um, Holmes? Well, this bloke, um, fellow, has been following me since we stepped in. Behind Watson was a stunning jet black horse. Well, well. He's always been reluctant to approach anyone who wasn't my husband. You must have a way with animals. <laughs> I have been known to attract them, yes. 
My husband loved smoking so that he had his pipe lighted whether in the house, a carriage, or anywhere else, except in front of this very horse. That's quite a bond he must have had. A real task it is to separate a smoking man from his pipe. Watson motioned to stroke the horse in a way that said he had done so a thousand times before. The horse, in turn, lowered its head and appeared all too pleased with the attention. Look at how much he's enjoying himself. <laughs> I adore horses, so I'd be real... Um, <clears throat> quite tickled pink if he is. In moments, there was a healthy crowd of handles surrounding Watson. Birds flittered atop his hat. Curious dogs grew excited, and other animals arrived to beg for a loving pet. Um, Watson, are you attracting them on purpose? She did say her husband loved them, didn't she? Uh. I ought to stand in his boots before solving a mystery about him. The more proofs, the better. You're just showing off. Fibber. Speaking of animals, you mentioned you were raising the snake that attacked your butler, if I recall correctly. It isn't allowed to roam the grounds freely, is it? Oh no. We, we couldn't possibly let a swamp adder wander on its own. I knew of swamp adders. They were known for their incredible size. Reports had measured them to be up to 190 centimeters in length. Oh, to see a snake so massive in person! I lack the imagination for it, but the venom they produce must be potent. Did your butler recover? By God's grace, yes. He managed to avoid being bitten directly, and only received a small scrape as he moved out of its path. I'm so relieved he wasn't hurt. It was only because of me- Welcome home, madam. What's this? I was under the impression you had gone to enlist the help of a detective, not the Pied Piper. The number of animals gaily trailing behind Watson increased by the minute. My, you are a character, Mr. Holmes. Oh, <laughs> you flatter me. There wasn't any need to come all the way out here to welcome me, Lot. Perhaps so, but I happen to be returning from the stable. I wish to introduce the two of you to Lot, the butler I spoke of earlier. He has been working for us longer than any other. Lot, this is the famed detective Herlock Holmes and his assistant, Miss Watson. They came all the way from London's heart after hearing my story. Is that so? Then I will show you to the mansion, right this way. He's an unusually gruff butler. Forgive him. He isn't an especially friendly man on the surface, but you'll not find a man more kind or diligent. My husband trusted him wholly. Oh, there's nothing to forgive. I knew he was a good man. You did? Oh. Because all the animals here love him. They flock to him the way they did you, uh, Holmes. And that alone is enough to know? He surely spent many years watching over them. Which only adds to the mystery. Why would the snake choose to attack him? And Madame Janet looked terribly desperate to speak up earlier. I placed those observations comfortably at the forefront of my mind as we were led into the mansion. We were welcomed by two maids, Ash and Sophia. Ash, Sophia, and Lot were the only three servants who lived with the madam. When we consider how the culprit has been targeting you, it's likely they're lurking either here or nearby. If we have your blessing, we'll survey the mansion for clues of any kind. By all means. <laughs>